Good afternoon, I am Mr. Rish. Thank you for joining me for this video. We're looking here at a limit puzzle. We have this specific limit expressed over here. Limit as x approaches 0, we have f of x divided by x equaling a 1. For limit as x approaches 0, some function f of x when it's divided by x in this rational functional form, the output should always equal 1. We have to find the possible functions which would very well satisfy that limit output of one, we have to find possible values of f of x that would satisfy that and generate a output here in terms of this one that you see. You know when you're looking here in terms of x approaching zero, you want to think about those possible functions where zero would literally be in the domain of f of x. That is, you know, when you were to graph your function, it would kind of go through the origin and you know zero would be involved. That would be another thing. Another thing, another clue you want to look at since you have an x over here in the denominator and if you were to put 0 directly in here, you would 0 out the denominator. You want to use those type of functions which would give you this 0 over 0 indeterminate limit form for which then you can use a Le Hopital's rule procedure. This right here must be perhaps the biggest hint. You want to look at those functions that when you would put 0 in that function because 0 is in the domain of f of x, you would end up with this type of indeterminate limit form. Then you would do Le Hopital's rule of the numerator and the denominator, the derivative procedures at the end of those derivative procedures when you plug in zero you'll get this good value of one and there are a few functions which stand out in terms of zero being in their domain but you don't want to be thinking only about polynomial functions because generally if you think of something like x squared as your f of x and you have x you can very well simplify polynomial functions you're really looking at x and in terms of zero you have a zero so that type of thinking will not work you don't want to be thinking about polynomial functions because they would end up Cancelling out the numerator and the denominator functions the polynomials would basically simplify with each other and spoil that Presentation you have there is but one polynomial Expression that I can think of one of your possible outcomes could very well be this if f of x was equal to x a Linear line going to the origin your limit expression very well becomes x over x Right and that's what you're evaluating now it becomes limit as x approaches 0 1 and your answer here is 1. So this right here is a single one good expression that I can think of in terms of a polynomial that very well satisfies this. We will put all of our possibilities over here and we'll start itemizing them. Remember we're not thinking of all the possibilities, we're thinking of some possibilities and then other people can think of some other possibilities. But right there, x would be perhaps the single polynomial I would attempt and put in there y equals x, f of x equals x, that would very well satisfy this limit. Another one which comes to my mind is this, because I want to somehow generate an indeterminate limit form and that function should go to the origin. How about this, if f of x were equal to sine x, now you're looking at limit as x approaches zero, you're looking at sine x over x. You know, in terms of placement of zero, you'll be looking at a zero over zero, indeterminate limit form. You do the derivative of the numerator and you do the derivative of the denominator, you get cosine x over one and you put in zero, you do cosine of zero and that give you one. So sine x in terms of f of x is very well another option we have and that right there is another good candidate for this. Remember, we're finding possible functions f of x that would very well satisfy the limit. We found 2x and sine x. We can find more and there are more out there. Remember, think of those functions which zeros in their domain and they would lead you to an indeterminate limit form of 0 or 0 if you were to literally plug in that 0. How about this? f of x is equal to tan x. Now your limit expression really doing limit as x approaches 0, you're doing tan x over x. If you were to plug zero here, you know tan of zero is a zero, x zero is a zero, you have an indeterminate limit form. You do the derivative of the numerator, you do the derivative of the denominator, because you can do Le Hopital's rule. Tan x becomes secant square x, x becomes a one, and you plug in a zero. Secant square of zero is just a one. So that right there is another possibility I'm thinking of. And it checks this box and it works. Tan x is a very good option here for a function because it literally goes through the origin in terms of its curve. There are other options here too. How about this? If f of x were equal to sine hx, a hyperbolic sine, you know the graph of that very well looks something like this and it goes to the origin. If you were to look at this in terms of your limit, limit as x approaches 0, sine hx divided by x, you put 0 over here, sine h of 0 is a 0, you get a 0 over 0 indeterminate limit form. You can do the derivative of the numerator, derivative of the denominator, you get cosine hx over 1 and you can do that. 
when you plug the zero into the definition of cosine ajax, you're doing e to the zero plus e to the minus zero over two, over one, all of that. Because this over one still exists, you have a two over two and you get a one. And right here, sine ajax is also another legitimate option that we have determined. Sine ajax, it works very well. In terms of our function and in terms of this limit, it will give you a value of one. There are more options out there. Think about curves which go through the origin because zero is in their domain and which would very well lead you to an indeterminate limit form. How about this one right over here? If f of x were equal to inverse sine x or arc sine x, you'd be looking here in terms of a limit as x approaches zero inverse sine x over x. You know you can bring out the calculator if you don't want to do this mentally. You can just do zero inverse sine and you'll get a zero. You'll have a very clear here zero or zero indeterminate limit form. You'll do the derivative of that numerator. You'll do the derivative of the denominator. Remember this is like one of those type of puzzle exercises where you're forced to think about possible functions that would very well satisfy what you're seeing over here. The derivative of inverse sine, you know, is going to be 1 over root 1 minus x squared. That's the derivative of arc sine. And then you have derivative of x and you're going like this, you're putting 0 in places of x, you'll have 1 over root 1 minus 0, and that will very well give you that 1. So here we've determined yet another, the arc sine x would very well fit this limit form in terms of that output 1 that we want. And the arc sine x, if you graph it very well, does go through that origin. But how about we look at this, if f of x were equal to arc tan x, or inverse tan, that's a function which if you were to graph it right here, horizontal asymptotes at positive pi over 2 and minus pi over 2, it goes here to the origin. It, it very well would fit the bill. You do a limit as x approaches 0, you have inverse tan x over x, you'd have 0 over 0. If you don't see that, you can do 0 and then you can do inverse tan and you'll get a 0. You do the derivative of that numerator expression, you know derivative of tan x or r tan x is 1 over 1 plus x squared derivative of x is just a 1, you can put a 0, you'll get 1 over 1 plus 0, which is a 1. So we're finding out that inverse tan indeed fits this bill here as well. Remember, we're not going to find them all, but I will try to do one more for you. Let's try one more over here, then we can leave the rest to our imagination. You wouldn't have much success here with a natural log, because the natural log 1 generates over here a 1 comma 0. It's 0 here, the origin is outside the domain of your natural log. But if you were to horizontally translate the natural log, and you would say f of x is equal to natural log x plus 1, you know now you've horizontally shifted your curve now such that it's going right here to the origin. Uh, you'll have a vertical asymptote here at x equals minus 1. Here the vertical asymptote was your y-axis x equals 0. But this right here could very well fit the bill. You do limit as x approaches 0, you're doing natural log x plus 1, which is your f of x divided by x, and you put in 0, you'll have a natural log of 1 over 0, and that's 0 over 0. So that works, then you do the derivative of the numerator, and you do the derivative of the denominator. The derivative of the numerator would be d over du, ln u, and then du or dx, x plus 1, which is just a 1. You'll have a natural log u come in terms of the derivative of the composite here, and here you still have a 1 coming out of the x. You'll have a 1 over u over 1, and 0 can come in. You'll have 1 over x plus 1. You can put in a 0, you'll have a 1 over 1, and that'll give you easily a 1 that you want all along. So, natural log x plus 1 very well generates a function such that it fulfills this specific limit puzzle. So in terms of our conclusion over here, we are looking at a function limit as x approaches 0, some function that if you were to divide it by x as x approaches 0, you would get an output of 1. Our clues to this was that we had to de determine a function such that 0 is clearly in the domain of f of x because that way you would get clearly this indeterminate limit form. You wanted to get a 0 in the denominator and 0 in the numerator just by your initial check of that 0 in place of x's if an indeterminate limit form would exist because this right here would actually in terms of its derivation procedure via the L'Hopital's rule very well help you arrive at this. So we came up at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 possibilities. If f of x is equal to x, sine x, tan x, hyperbolic sine x, arc sine x, arc tan x, or natural log x plus 1, in terms of f of x, you can very well do this x approaching 0 for any of these functions divided by x, and your output would always equal to a 1. 
and that right there are seven possibilities there must be more out there but i'm only presenting seven over here and i thank you for watching this video hopefully you enjoyed this specific limit puzzle video have a good day bye